Hello everyone, welcome back to Chucky Pocket, and in today's video, we're going to be checking out this very old sound card, the Sound Blaster Odigy 2, so stay tuned for my overview. Okay, so I actually pulled this card out of an old XPS Generation 3. The reason why I pulled it out is because I was trying to fix that computer and found I could not. So I pulled it out of the system, and the card actually still works. I cleaned it out, which you can watch in a card somewhere on the top here, and that's how I cleaned it. Anyways, carry on. So I inserted this into my computer right below the RX 480. First thing I noticed is that the onboard sound gets disabled and locked out from your use the moment I insert this into my computer. I don't know why it's like that, but that's how it is. Next up, you see all these ports on the side or the top of the card, you may say. There are several connectors for the sound card to be used for several things, but most of them are obsolete. But I'm going to tell you what they are anyways. The first one is TAD IN, then comes LINE IN, CD AUDIO, AUXILIARY, CD DIGITAL, and MIDI SYNCH. I have no idea what those are all for, but they're just there. The second thing to note is that this card uses PCI, not PCIe, so this may be an issue if your board does only have PCIe. However, this can simply be fixed by using a fairly cheap PCI to PCIe adapter. I have that linked down in the description. Another thing to note is the card does not sag at all. Okay, so I'm using the uh, the onboard sound that I'm using is coming from my MSI 970 motherboard. The quality on this thing is 24 bit, 192,000 hertz. However, when I stuck the Audigy 2 into this thing, it turned into 32 bit, 192 hertz. That's just a jump from 24 to 32 bit. And another thing to note is both the onboard and this Audigy are 7.1 channel surround, I mean not surround, but 7.1 channel sound, and that's pretty standard. But jumping from 24-bit to 32-bit is a very good quality difference, and you can notice that if you pay really close attention or if you have really, really good headphones. If you don't have, if your headphones are like $10 or not that good quality, you're most likely not going to notice the sound difference, in which case this card, or any sound card, is useless. You should just keep your onboard graph, uh, sound card. Next thing I found is that you must disable all the audio enhancements for this card to work without fading in all of the sound. I don't know why it's like this either, but this is just a few bugs I found. You gotta remember this card was designed for Windows XP. And one quick thing to note, just like all sound cards, I'm pretty sure, the Audigy 2 does include a mic, jack, and of course all your other standard audio ports. Okay, so basically, the conclusion time. Should you get this card or not? Well, if you look on eBay, you should be able to find this card from $11 to $20, and depending on what you want, you should get it. If you're the kind of person who spends $10 on your headphones or something, there's no real reason to get any sound card for that. But if you like to spend over $30 on a headset or good quality speakers or headphones for or any ear headphones, whatever, if you spend over $30, I'd say it's probably a good idea to look into a sound card that'll give you better quality for your PC. Jumping from 24-bit to 32-bit is not a really big difference, but you can notice it if your headset is good, and if you notice audio quality very good, but you want a very cheap option, I can highly recommend this very old Sound Blaster card because it is only 11 to $20 on eBay. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this uh, old overview or something, and if you did, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel. If you didn't, then tell me why you did not, and give this video a thumbs down. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.